what they do in that case is they've developed a simulated area weapons effects system. And that's a radio broadcasting system. Artillery fire is programmed into the computer and you give the coordinates where the barrage is going to fall and the time at which it's going to fall. That information is then broadcast over the battlefield by a radio system and there's another, com another receiver and computer on the tanks and the vehicles that are on the battlefield that receives that information and checks their own location to see if they're in the lethal box. If the answer is yes, it makes the same determination of a kill that you would have got off direct fire. Shuts the system down, doesn't let him fire anymore, and registers his, him as dead. So you can do that with artillery. Well, that same mechanism works for a couple other things too. Minefields. How would you do minefields on a simulated battlefield? Would you go out and bury these devices which pop up and hit you under the tank or, or, well, what they do is broadcast the coordinates of the minefield. Now you can still go out and emplace dummy mines, but the coordinates that actually kill you are coming out of this radio system, out of the SAW-E system. And so when your tank rolls into a minefield, it's just like a persistent artillery barrage. You can do the same thing for chemical clouds. It could be moving and it could be a short-lived minefield, effectively, or a long-lived artillery barrage, whichever way you want to think about it. But people can become attrited based on moving into this radio broadcasted uh, chemical cloud. So that's the SAW-E system. Back at the National Training Center, they have a command building they call the Star Wars building. And within that building, they have a great viewer which tracks the location of every vehicle on the battlefield. Where he is, <coughs> where he is and what his status is. It knows where each one of these are every minute. They're, each vehicle is equipped with a radio broadcaster which is telling the command bunker where they are. And so you essentially watch this like you would watch a movie and you can see all these instrumented vehicles move around on the battlefield and you know when they go dead, they broadcast, I'm dead now. And you can sit in the theater and watch this thing unfold. Well this map you're looking at is exactly like a constructive simulation map tool. What's driving this is identical to the way a map tool is driven by a constructive simulation. And finally, Top Gun. We leave the deserts and go up into the sky and you find naval aviators training at Top Gun. Most people have seen the Top Gun movie so you're familiar with the idea of these planes chasing each other around trying to get radar locked to register a kill on each other. These guys are learning how to maneuver their planes to conduct effective air-to-air -air combat. That's what Top Gun is all about. And I found this picture at the Navy website. The Navy has a thing called the Ouija board. And this picture is from the USS Enterprise. The Ouija board is a representation of the flight deck of an aircraft carrier. It allows people to manage the aircraft that are on deck on an aircraft carrier, where they're positioned, which ones are getting ready to line off, which ones are getting ready to take off, whether we need to bring more up from underneath the plane and you can manage the operations of dozens or maybe hundreds of aircraft on the flight deck of the aircraft carrier. Well that same device is very useful as a training tool. Before you let this person boss around an aircraft carrier deck, you say we're going to let you play with the Ouija board first. We're going to let you manage hundreds of aircraft through the Ouija board and then when you're good at it, we'll actually let you talk into the radio and send orders out to people to move those planes around. A great tool for teaching people. Now where is live training going in the future? Well it's so ancient it's almost gone everywhere already. All of your children learn skills, learn behaviors through live rehearsal. They imitate you, they imitate people they know, they learn things by imitating people. And in some places schools focus on that kind of imitation and rehearsal to teach lessons. Um, if you go to mediation and negotiations in businesses, very often they will get into a room and they will rehearse the negotiation with the other side. You will have somebody role playing the enemy or the opponent, the, the other business that you're trying to take over and trying to think up every scenario that you could put yourself through. Trying to think your way through each situation that might arise when you get into the real negotiation. 
And finally, what I called exercise psychology. If you've taken any karate classes, one of the things that they'll do is they'll put you into sparring classes and they'll put you through katas, which are specifically meant to take the skills you learn standing in line and get you to use them in combinations and get you to feel like, I have to do this for my own safety. In some cases, you have to do this to keep from getting kicked in the head. So that's what uh, live rehearsal is and kind of where it's going. If you want an excellent reference on live rehearsal, the book Dragons at War, Land Battle in the Desert, came out shortly after Desert Storm. And it's a really great book about one soldier's experience in going through the National Training Center. He describes everything he went through. And he is not at all trying to describe it from the point of view of a simulation audience. He's trying to describe the lessons learned by a soldier going through this kind of live rehearsal. And so he goes into great detail about all the things that you do in learning to operate as part of the battalion he was part of. I forgot what it was. That's probably the best book that I know of on the subject. Well, I told you we'd reach the end rather quickly. Um, we've talked about military history. Live rehearsal is re relatively short. Part task training, firing ranges, operational ranges, several different topics.